Hello and uh, welcome back. Well, I've teased you before with it, uh, but here it is. It is the Fluke 8500 and it is still working. It is around 76 that it was produced. And uh, yeah, as I said, it is still working. So uh, let's have a closer look. It absolutely needs cleaning because it is all sticky and dirty. I will zoom, uh, zoom in on it and uh, we can just do a quick test and then we proceed from there. Okay, and here it is. As you can see, it has the big 19 inch frame option. It is all built, uh, built around it. Big ears, so you can put it in the, in the rack. And uh, yes, as I said, it, it really needs some cleaning. Let me try to do a zoom in. As you can see, it has been somewhere in the very dusty, dirty environment. Uh, yeah, you can even see the sticker here. Last calibration, 86. A little bit more to the right. All the function options. Uh, the connectors. Okay. But you can see the, the buttons and everything look still quite okay. Not too many scratches on the on the display. Uh, but uh, does it function? Okay, let's switch it on. It says hi, 101. And then C235, I still need to find out what that is. It only has the DC volt uh, options. So DC volts. This is now in auto mode. Uh, let's do up, 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 up. Uh -huh. Let me get the voltage reference. We start with 2.5. Scale down. Scale down. One more. Look at this. How many di digits now? 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6.5. This is cool. You can change a little bit the uh, sample rate. Now it's slower samples. Filtering, but I would think that is for... Uh, filtering would be for AC, I think. I need to read still. Uh, but it seems quite okay. The only difference is what I saw is now it's it changes through the scales a little bit because now it's 2.2.499998. Well, that's what it should be. <laughs> uh, but if I go up, it should also be an eight. And here it's suddenly 2.5. So each range need to be calibrated by itself. Yeah, and it's very close because here it says two, four, nine, eight, nine, seven. Can we do one more down? Yes, we can. This is this is one millivolt off, even less. Can we do one down? And it's too much. Okay. Let me go to the five volts. I think. One scale is uh, the one fold scale goes up to 2.5. So I think the next one will be too high. Yeah. So five, and it should be 5.0001. 5 5.000.2 millivolt off. This is amazing. And the 7.5, yeah, it's also 7.50005. It's also a half a millivolt. Yeah, very nice. Yeah, and this multimeter comes with a little drawer here. Here is a little space. And this drawer was in here. And it used to have the operating instructions. 
but because it's so old, the paper almost be integrated already. So it did have the instructions with all the options. But the, as you can see, once you scratch it, the text just falls off. So I will make pictures of this. And uh, then we keep that safe. So luckily this is just the option list that is not there. Okay, having a look at the back, we can see all the options that are installed and we can even see where it came from. And it is really stucky and it really smells like it has been in a smoking environment, which is weird because it comes from a school, at least it says here, it's the technical high school. And uh, so later it has been somewhere else. Well, the options that are installed, as I said, it's the only DC fault, otherwise we would have had this uh, option 9 or option 1 and we don't have that. There is no ohms converter, there is no current shunt, no calibration memory. So the things that were installed are the IEEE 9075. Apparently that standard changed by the year. It is here. And the interface isolator. Well, that is nice to know. Probably if you, I don't know, Maybe it's isolated from the earth, from the ground. But once you put the connector in the front, that of course changes that. So I like to open it up and clean it. Uh, while the outside uh, looked really dirty and smelly, the inside actually looks actually very, very nice. And I'm a bit surprised to, to see certain things here, like there is here this uh, current shunt, or it's an empty box, and the ohms converter, or it is an empty box. And uh, the isolator should be there. So only it's the option, the AC option is not here, it seems. So I'm surprised there is a box of the ohms converter, or it is just empty, but it says caution statics. So we will read uh, the manual and I will wear my uh, wrist wraps. But let me zoom in on the power supply. Yes, here we have the power supply. And it looks all very, very, very clean, I must say. And even uh, some of the caps seems to have been replaced, like this black one seems like one that is much newer than the 70s, this one also, these could be. But uh, I think it has been serviced, so that's a good thing. Okay, I'll read a bit more. These are the actual modules. So uh, in a sense, again, then I'm, I'm lucky. How is it possible? So there is an ohms converter and there is the current shunt module is also there. They are in the right position because they need to be in the first floor. And uh, that is where it is. So I like to quickly test a little bit uh, the current. Um, I took already the, the connections off, as you can see. What I did see is that if you use the voltage option, that is the first two. So, well, we saw that that works. You can do that with shorter uh, connections. Mm -hmm. That is the voltage. And if we want to do current, then you need to, I think you need to remove the two connections. Well, I did that. Then we can use the current source that I have here. 
and let's see, I need to have the separate and the black. And that goes then to the other connection, the other two. So it is not necessarily that this is a, in the ohms mode, it are sense wires, but with the, uh, with the current shunt installed, you need to use that there. So then I need to switch over. Where is the front? Oh yeah. Where is the front? So I put it in amps mode, then I switch on my current source and I'm on 10 milliamps and it seems to work uh, with a proper scale also. Minus three, so milliamps. Cool. Can I go a lot lower? Ah, then it somehow reboots. So why is that? Hmm. Well, I cannot go higher than 20 milliamps, but uh, that seems to work. Cool. Okay, well then I also like to test uh, the ohms uh, module. Well, I took out all my little connections. So I'm just gonna do that here. So I'm gonna connect the earth connection to the, and the black and the black. So then connect it also, then the red and the red for the sensing and I have this little calibrator which is 180 ohms and we add it also and then we need to set it to the ohms mode that is the middle one here and then it should be 180 ohms no 180 k okay. One seven nine nine four. Well, <laughs> uh, I'll go down. Up, up. Yeah, plus says megas one point. Okay. Super cool. Auto. So indeed, it has both modules. That is nice. Okay, now all the rough test is, tests worked, and uh, now I'm just going to clean all the, the buttons that we can easily access right now, and uh, I will just put the time lapse, and then uh, later, because all the modules we can easily access, and I need to read how the whole uh, calibration procedure is, but the rough test worked, so uh, cleaning time. Yeah, while well, I'm cleaning uh, the back, I was also thinking I can just add these uh, modules now because it wasn't done and it was a super nice surprise. So uh, we have the ohms converter and the current shunts. Rear input also have. Only there is now AC converter. No parallel interface, no serial. Okay, cool.
So, okay, I put it back together again. It's all clean, not sticky. And as you can see, the front just changed from light brown to, to the creamy as it should be. Let's zoom in a little bit. Look at this. I hope I can move without making too much. Look at that. Almost like new. The only thing I still need to do is get uh, the paper manual. Needs to be reprinted because it is really uh, gone. And uh, then I will cut it to the same size. And then I can put it back in the drawer because the drawer now works again. Yeah. It can go out and it goes back in. So there I print new. So that was it. I think it looks a lot better uh, than it did. And uh, the, the, the voltage nicely works as it did. Uh, I did find out that there was an OMS module and, uh, and the current module. I didn't expect that, so that was an extra. Uh, those modules are still a bit dodgy, so I need to find out what it is because if the current uh, uh, increases too fast, it immediately uh, reboots itself and goes back to voltage mode. And the same is in the ohms module. Instead of uh, being in over range when you pull the plug, it immediately goes into reset and goes back to voltage mode. So I need to look what that is. But it uh, is cool that the modules are in it. So it's almost full, except for the AC. So that is good. The manual I have here, I put it in a little bag because the paper is just completely gone. I made pictures. So uh, I'm gonna just try to reprint it with the laser printer and uh, then it can do it for another, uh, well, 40, 50 years. And the drawer works again. So uh, that's good. Uh, maybe next time I make a video about uh, calibration if I find out that it works, that, that uh, needs a lot more uh, attention still. So thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.